Welcome to episode 69 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-day scripture journals, as well as the Live It Out Planner pages. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified paper organizer. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. As we look toward the end of 2019 and think ahead to 2020, I want to share something that you can begin to work on today that will help improve your life in the coming year, and that is learning how to create routines. I've talked about routines in some of my past episodes, but I don't think I've done an episode specifically dedicated to routines. I think routines are so foundational to good time management, so it's important we learn how to develop them and utilize them to their fullest potential. Before I get into how to create and establish routines, let's first talk about what routines are and what they are not. Routines are not super structured. They are not meant to restrict your life. In fact, they are quite the opposite from anything rigid and limiting. Routines are simply a guide to help you accomplish certain tasks. When you think of routines, I would guess you most often think of morning and evening routines. But did you know you can develop routines for just about any time of your day? Let me give you some examples, and then I'll share in a bit how you can implement these into your life. One routine I think any family with children at home should have is an afternoon routine. You know, for the time when the kids get home from school until after dinner is over. Now, if you work all day and your kids have after school activities most days, this would be more like an early evening routine. If you're at home most days, whether working from home or as a stay-at-home mom or wife, then you can incorporate a mid-morning routine and an early afternoon routine. These routines could help you stay focused on what needs to be done around your house. If you work outside the home, you can develop routines based on the type of work you do to help you stay focused and move through your days in a more purposeful way rather than trying to always figure out what you need to do next. You can see by these examples that routines can improve your time management and give you a little more control over how your day goes. These are just two of the many benefits routines bring to my life. I've personally discovered some benefits of the evening routine I've created for myself. First, it prepares me for the next day. When I look over my schedule for the next day the night before, I can begin to think through my day and anticipate any challenges that may arise. Second, it helps me to sleep better. Once I've assessed my schedule for the next day, I can put it out of my mind knowing what needs to be done the next day. I sleep so much better when I don't have to worry about what's going to be going on the next day. Third, it creates a peaceful mood. My evening routine helps me to stay peaceful, and in return allows my peaceful mood to spread throughout my home. When I've not followed through with my routine, I end up being stressed, and that can be felt by my whole family. Fourth, it keeps my house cleaner. Doing a couple of chores right before I go to bed helps me to stay on top of keeping my house clean. When everything is in its place, I have to spend less time cleaning later. And fifth, It allows me to stay organized. When I pick up and put things away, I'm able to keep my home more organized. Just five minutes in the evening to put everything in its place can save a ton of time on busy mornings when everyone is trying to find what they need for the day. My evening routine is fairly simple and straightforward, yet when I follow it through, it is a very powerful part of my time management system. And I'll share in more detail in just a minute what's actually in that evening routine. So now that we know the benefits of having a routine and realize that we can have multiple routines for different times in our days, let's look at some simple steps for creating and establishing routines. 
I want to use my own evening routine to walk you through these steps. Then I'll follow up with how you can implement some of the other types of routines I talked about earlier. First, you need to determine the amount of time you have to complete the routine. No matter what time of day your routine is going to take place, you've got to figure out how much time you have to complete it. For my evening routine, I allow about an hour to get it done. The routine you're trying to create may, may need more time or less time. You just have to figure out what that is. For example, if you're trying to create a morning routine to make things run more smoothly, then you'll have to figure out what time you'll need to get up in the morning to get things done before you start your day. The same applies to an afternoon or early evening routine. You may have as much as three to four hours to as little as one to two hours. So start by figuring out how much time you have to complete the routine that you're trying to develop. Second, make a list of all the things you'd like to get done during your routine. My evening routine consists of 10 activities, but they are usually completed very quickly. As I mentioned when I talked about the benefits, doing these activities as part of a routine helps me to go to bed more peacefully and sets me up for success for the next day. The activities I do during my evening routine that I start at 9 p.m. are turning on the dishwasher, taking medication, figuring out what's for dinner the next day, checking my calendar for the next day, and picking up and putting away things. These activities usually take me about 20 minutes to do. Then I take off my makeup, dress for bed, and decide what to wear the next day. By this point, it's about 9.30 or 9.40, and then I get in bed where I read and journal and try to get the lights out by 10. Now, I'll be completely honest here, there are some nights I don't get the lights out by 10 because I really like to read, and if I'm in a good story, it's hard to stop. But I do make that my goal because it helps me to have a better night's sleep because I have longer to sleep before I have to get up in the morning. So as you're thinking of creating a routine, you need to know all of the things you want to accomplish during that time. And that brings me to the next step, which is knowing your energy levels. This is especially important for your morning and evening routines. If you have a lot you want to accomplish in the morning, yet you struggle with getting out of bed, then you may want to see which activities you can move to the night before in an evening routine that will make room for the things you need to get done in the morning. This is where picking out what to wear for the next day and figuring out what's going to be for dinner the next day come into play. Like if you decide these things the night before, that's two things you don't have to do when you get up in the morning and that can totally free up some time to get other things done. And you know the opposite is also true. Maybe you're a morning person and you like to get to bed early every night. You could push more of your activities to the morning so you could get to bed on time each night. Personally, I am not a morning person and I know that very well, in fact, my morning routine consists of just five activities, and honestly, they all don't get done every day. However, if I can get up on time, I can usually get most of those things done, if not all of them. But I know I can't add any more to my morning routine. That's why I do so much in the evening or at other times during the day. You know yourself better than anyone, so make a good assessment of your energy levels to know when to get certain activities done. Okay, so you've figured out how much time you have to complete a routine, the things that you want to do during that routine, and you know your energy levels. So it's time to put that routine into place. This step involves figuring out the best order to complete the task you need to do. Let's go back to my evening routine example. Most of the activities I try to complete in the evening take a short amount of time. And as you could tell when I shared what I do during that routine, those activities were grouped by location. 
So I started my kitchen, making sure the dishwasher is going, taking my medication, figuring out what's for dinner, and looking at my planner for the next day. I continue by picking up and putting things away that are on our island in our kitchen or in our family room, which is right off the kitchen. It's all one big area. After I take care of all of that, I've moved back to my bedroom where I take off my makeup, get dressed for bed, and pick out what I'm wearing for the next day. Then I get in bed to read or journal. So, my best advice here is to figure out the activities you'd like to complete during your routine, then see what each of them have in common. It may be the location where they're done or the type of activity. Once you figure out the commonalities, then you can begin to arrange them in a logical way. Now, don't get hung up here on this step. Don't aim for perfection the first go around or even at all. It really is just a starting point for implementing your routine effectively. Just start the best way that you know and give it a try. Then the last step would be to evaluate and adjust your routine. You may discover that you've tried to squeeze too many activities in a short amount of time and there is no way you'll ever get them all done. In that case, you'll need to figure out what you can eliminate or move to another time or routine. You may realize that you should be completing the activities in a different order. If so, rearrange them and try another way. Give the process some time. It may take a few weeks to see how effective your routine is and get it to the point where it is easily doable every day. So let's recap the steps. First, determine the amount of time you have to complete the routine. Second, make a list of all the things you want to get done in the routine. Third, know your energy levels. Fourth, put the routine in place. And fifth, evaluate and adjust as needed. I mentioned earlier that I'd share what different kinds of routines could look like other than just your typical morning or evening routines. Let's start with that afternoon or early evening routine I mentioned, especially if you have kids. Um, you could have them get home from school, let them eat a small snack, do their homework, and then have some free time until dinner. And while your kids are doing this, you could be getting dinner ready and handling anything else you need to take care of which could be things like signing school papers or looking over their work or anything to, you know, related to what your kids may need from you during that time. Having a defined routine like this can help your kids know what to expect and probably help you eliminate some stress and arguments because they will know what to expect every day. They will know that they are coming in and, you know, doing their homework as soon as they have a little snack and then they can have their free time. So if you are having trouble with your kids doing homework, getting them to do homework, try implementing some kind of routine, especially one that would give them um, some kind of incentive or reward, which could be just the free time that they have after they complete their homework. Okay, let's say you have a job where um, it's either outside the home or you could work from home. You could have a beginning of the workday routine that will help you get started every day. This could be the time you answer emails, return some phone calls, or work on a project. The key here is to have a set time for each activity so you don't end up spending your time doing things that eat up your real work time. I know for me, if I get on social media or check my email, I can waste a lot of time. So I try to relegate those things to the last thing that I do so I know I have a limited amount of time to spend on them. I hope this episode has given you some ideas about what routines could help you out with managing your time better. I encourage you to look beyond the traditional morning and evening routines and see what processes in your life, what times of day, could you use a routine that will help you um, manage your time better at home, at work, wherever um, you are, that the routine would just be a big benefit for you. 
I would love to know your thoughts about routines. So send me an email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and share your successes and struggles as well as any questions you may have about routines. And as always, you can find me on social media on Facebook at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman or on instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. Until next time, I hope you have a great week.